Picture this. Your name is Kaldi. You're an Ethiopian goat herder who goes out into the field one day and sees your goats excitedly munching berries from a tree, unable to sleep. Curious, you try some of these berries yourself and you find yourself very energized and excited to go to work. So you take these berries to a local monk who promptly calls them the work of the devil and throws them into a fire. But the fire roasts these berries and you scrape away the fruit that they are surrounded by and store the berries in hot water. And when you take a sip of that hot water, you find yourself energized for your morning devotionals and prayers, and it becomes a staple drink in your area. Now that, of course, is coffee, and that is what I'm brewing right now for you. Coffee, when it made its way out of Ethiopia into Yemen, started getting cultivated on a large scale, and then of course made its way to Europe, where its bitter flavor was actually seen to be a prohibited or sort of evil consumptive item. You shouldn't drink it, said the clergy, but the Pope got involved. He tried it. Turns out he liked the coffee, so it got its papal seal of approval and it made its way around the country and then around the world where now we enjoy it in coffee houses everywhere. Now, I do not know how much of coffee's origin story is actually true, but what I do know is that it is one of the world's most beloved drinks, a fascinating plant, and I have to say, that's a epic cup of coffee. The problem is I'm out of grounds, which is why I've been growing a coffee plant for the last three years in my greenhouse. So let's check out the greenhouse where I'll show you my coffee plant, show you how you can grow coffee at home. And at the very end, I have some coffee cherries to harvest, roast, ferment, and turn into my very own homegrown cup of coffee. And here is my plant, the one that I've been growing for over three years. I almost neglected it for a full year and it is finally starting to produce some beautiful coffee cherries. But this one, I do not know the variety. There are 123 different varieties of coffee. Two are the predominant ones grown for the beans, for the coffee that we know and love. So you have Arabica and then you have Robusta. So first up you have the most popular and that would be Arabica, which is native to Ethiopia, but has been cultivated in Arabia for over a thousand years years. This one is the more finicky plant. It is certainly the more popular plant. It can grow at high altitudes, making it ideal for places where I actually saw coffee, which would be somewhere in Hawaii. I was on a place called Mountain Thunder in Hawaii. These misty, beautiful mountains. The coffee can get up to 20 feet, but they typically prune it down to about six or seven feet or so. And it has this sort of light and bright flavor. Next up, you have Robusta, which is the sort of more bitter little brother of Arabica. The plant can actually grow twice as tall, about 40 feet tall. It also has twice as much caffeine, which is why it has that bitter flavor. But Robusta, which I suspect this one might be, is able to grow at lower temperatures and also lower altitudes, which makes it perfect for someone like me growing this at sea level. So let's talk about how to actually make sure your coffee plant has a chance of producing these little cherries. Ugh. Like I mentioned, I've had my plant for about three years and it only started to take off when I respected where it came from. It is a tropical African plant. I need to try to match tropical African conditions, at least as best as I can. So let's run through them really quickly. You've got sunlight. It is an understory plant. It does not want to be blasted by full Southern Californian sun like I'm doing right now, which is why it's on the ground in the greenhouse. It gets that sort of dappled sunlight. It really appreciates that. You can get leaf burn otherwise. As far as the moisture, it wants a lot of moisture, but if you give it a really moisture retentive soil mix, it will struggle. So adding things like volcanic rock, uh, that can help improve the drainage and make sure that it stays moist, but it doesn't stay overly wet. And then the final sort of really important one is humidity. You want that humidity to be quite high because again, it's a tropical plant. Humidity is king there. If it's dry, you're going to find that the plant will struggle. I also noticed that putting it up into a larger pot, it was in a much smaller one in the past. And when I did that, fertilizing it specifically with a higher nitrogen fertilizer earlier on in the plant's life in the first year or two, and maybe even you know, two and a half years or so, that really helped to kind of boost this plant and give it a lot of extra vegetative growth, which then brings us to the fact that it has finally made the coffee cherries. So let's talk about how to know when to harvest them, because I only have like 40 on this plant. I want to do it right. So your coffee is going to bloom in May or June. And then as those cherries develop, they'll probably come ripe somewhere around September. The thing is, in every coffee farm I've ever visited, they'll mention that's a very manual process. You need to get them when they are perfectly red, 
there's a little bit of squeeze to them. And so oftentimes that means you'll go out into the coffee farm and actually just pluck by hand off of an individual plant, leaving some, taking others. In this case, I'm pretty lucky because they are all basically red or slightly over. So I'm gonna go ahead and just harvest them all. And they're coming off very easily. So let's get all these and I'll show you something really cool you can do with the skins before we even get into the coffee process. So very cool moment here, guys. What I have to do now is you can see that we have something preventing us from getting to the bean, which is the coffee cherry, the flesh of which is actually quite sweet. So I'm really curious what it's gonna taste like. So I think I can just squeeze the beans out. You can tell it's like the precursor to a properly roasted coffee bean, but it certainly looks very weird. It's got this sort of parchment or flesh around it. Uh, but this is what I'm interested in for the moment. And this would be the cascara, which is the coffee cherry sort of husk, which can be made into a drink. I actually think it's a quite a good drink. Some might even say it's better than coffee. So I'm gonna try it raw and just see what it tastes like. It's honestly quite good. It's a little bit mild as far as flavor, but there's a nice little sweetness to it. I wouldn't quite say full on cherry, but it's almost like if you took a cherry and, and diluted the flavor down a bit, quite nice. So I'll probably try to do something with the cascara, but what I have to do now is ferment all of the beans, much like you would do with a you know, tomato seed. If you were saving a tomato seed, you kind of have to ferment off that mucus lining. So that's the method. I'm gonna put these in for about two or three days and we'll see what happens. Now, I will say, I am not a coffee snob. I don't know a whole lot about after growing it, right? So there are so many different methods of processing. This is my DIY at home method. If you have a better one, please let me know down in the comments. It's been a few days since the ferment has begun. So we need to see what's going on, but I think I have a problem. I had shared my pride and joy, these coffee beans on Instagram, and one of you guys commented and said that the floating ones are all bad. So <laughs> there's actually more ones that are floating than aren't. So let's go ahead and see if I can get in here. I'm gonna grab one at the bottom and see if my coffee bean journey is still alive. I think that's a bean. I think we have a bean. So it does look like the ones at the bottom are fine. I'm gonna just collect those and maybe I'll open some of the other ones and we'll see if we can get maybe a half a cup of coffee here. Let the roast begin. I'm gonna go to medium on a cast iron. We'll let this heat up for about a minute or so. And then I'm basically just going to slowly stir these with a whisk until they look like coffee's supposed to look. Let's go for a medium roast. I mean, this smells like I, a roastery I've been in now. Right. This is starting to actually pump. My friends, here we have the first inaugural epic roast of beans. And I have to say, it smells like coffee. This finally actually smells like coffee. I feel like a success. What I'm gonna do now is weigh this in grams, convert it to the one to 18 beans to water ratio, which I guarantee I only have like a gram or two. And I'm gonna see if I can make the perfect small cup of coffee. We have three grams of roasted beans, and I also have nine grams of the cascara, or the coffee skin. So we're gonna do a one to 18 ratio on the beans first, but I need to grind them, and I'm very curious what I'm actually gonna get out of this, but let's go ahead and try it out. So we're going with a baby French press, 210 degree water, and we need 54 grams of water. I went to 57, all good. We've got the cascara though, and this is a much simpler process. You just dump it in. I need 145 grams of water here. All right, we have a couple minutes worth of steepage here. It does not look super dark, so let's call this a light roast. French press doesn't even go low enough to filter out the coffee. <laughs> but we're gonna do this anyway, so in we go. We have the world's worst espresso shot, perhaps. A nice steaming cup of coffee. It feels only right to go enjoy this where it all began. Okay, the moment of truth is upon us, my friends. I have half of a cup of a small cup's worth of coffee coming off of my beautiful tree. Let's get the scent. It does smell a little green. Maybe I didn't roast it enough, can't tell, but we'll find out right now. There's a hint of coffee in that. <laughs> it does taste a little bit like coffee. It's not all the way there. I think it's too green. I don't think I roasted it enough, but it actually is quite nice. It tastes good. It has more of like a super light roasted flavor. I know even sometimes people will drink green coffee. They'll do some sort of drink with that. It has more of that flavor. And even the color of it, it's, it's very light and even has a greenish hue. I enjoy it. I don't know what to say. I actually really like it. I'm gonna leave a little bit for Jacques. I do wanna try the cascara now and see what this tastes like. The only thing that I know about this is that it's typically brewed and then you add some sort of sweetener to it. 
but we'll just see how it tastes natural. That's really nice, actually. There's a lot of sugar, sort of sweetness to that. It has that light sort of cherry taste, almost like a light cherry syrup, I guess, with a little bit of a tea vibe. If you did add some honey to this and some ice, you'd have a beautiful, beautiful drink. So lightly green coffee, cascara, a beautiful coffee plant. Next year, a lot more to learn. Hope you've learned something about growing coffee at home. Had some fun with this. Subscribe if you want to see some more crazy grow ideas or practical gardening tips. Good luck in the garden and keep on growing.